it's brilliant to have you here. Um, I'd like to kickstart the secondary thought to me for January with um, an introduction to their work from Rachel at Lakeside. If that's OK with you, Rachel. Hello, that's really nice. Hi. <laughs> uh, I will be try and be short and sweet. Um, we have as part for secondary uh, two really exciting exhibitions, one that only opened on Friday. We've got Saad, uh, Saad Qureshi's piece um, at the moment, which is just incredible sculptures. They're just beautiful. They're massive and beautiful at the same time. His work is really about, he's gone around the country asking people what does paradise mean to them? Um, and um, he's talked to people from different faiths, people with no faith, and he's created these incredible sculptures and they're kind of weirdly familiar, but at the same time, they're not. They're in this kind of conceptual, beautiful world of anything's possible and where things might happen, but lots of overlaying of religious symbols from lots of different faiths. It's a very beautiful piece. We've got um, amazing work that we're going to do alongside it, artist work, um, looking at sculpture, looking at uh, literacy through, um, visual art, so visual literacy work. Um, so we've got that, and I'll literally just, if I. Sorry, Rachel, you've somehow gone on mute. Could you unmute? Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm very excited then. Obviously, pressing all kinds of buttons. Um, so that's the <laughs> first piece, and there's there's loads of wraparound in terms of that, in terms of starting points and real conversation starters. And then also we've got Claude um, Cahun's piece in, which is really looking about identity and gender fluid and what does that mean, uh, even right back into the 1930s, which obviously when he was when she was around. Um, so really looking about what does that mean, and we've got some again lovely starting conversations, some really beautiful workshops that our associate artists are going to run, which kind of starts some of those difficult conversations and about what does that actually mean today. Um, so yeah, we've got, and I'll put another link for Claude's work in there as well. Um, and then also we've got Dan Rapley's piece coming up, which is all about photography and um, working on slides. And the work that we'll be doing alongside is actually drawing on slides, um, really old 35 mil kind of slides and actually projecting them. So really kind of thinking of slightly different kind of, I guess, more analog <laughs> techniques than we would use now, um, but being really able to kind of start seeing how those are, yeah, kind of wet the appetite in terms of GCSE and A-level work, absolutely. So I'll stop there, but I'll put all the little links in and I'll put my email in. So if you want to know more specifically about what we're offering in terms of what will be in the workshops and what to expect, I can send you all that out after, if that's helpful. Thanks, Rachel. That is helpful. Um, all of the, yeah, the, we've been um, talking to lots of people about very, with primaries specifically about coming over to Lakeside lately. And it is amazing how, um, like how straightforward it is on the tram, <laughs> isn't it? So I really hope that people recognise how, how close you are and, and that it's a multi-form venue, multi um art form venue so there's the gallery space and there's also the theatre and and performing arts spaces and things so it's a re if you've never been as a school it's really worth checking out and it's obviously within the beautiful university park um at the lake nearby so yeah worth worth going or, or talking to Rachel if you've not had a chance to get over there recently um brilliant thanks Rachel uh, and hi Sarah thank you for coming <laughs> uh right so I'm going to ask somebody else. It's it's exciting. Can I ask Lauren from Anansi, please, to to say something? I don't think you've been to one of these recently, so it's really lovely that you're able to join us. Thank you so much for coming, and um, you're you're really welcome to share the things that you do for schools and secondaries in particular. Oh, thank you so much. I knew you were going to pick me next. I just I felt it. I don't know why. I just. I... Um, yes, yeah, so um, I'm Lauren. I'm the artistic director of Anansi Theatre Company. Uh, we were established in 2021 and we are run by women of colour um, from our advisory board to our facilitators to everybody who works with us identifies as a woman of colour. 
Um, we also support and work participants, work with participants where English isn't their first language. We currently run an empowerment youth group, which is for girls and young women of colour. And we're hopefully going to start doing more sessions, which everybody can come to. Um, we specialise in African storytelling workshops, physical theatre, and our core values are safety, opportunity and compassion. In terms of safety, not only the physical space, but the mental space, especially for women of colour or marginalised communities. Safety is a big thing for us and mental health is something that we work with a lot. So we oh. actually... Um, Shall I keep going? Okay. Um, and we actually employ um, a mental health champion for all our projects. Um, opportunity, we're really big on representation and creating opportunities for marginalised performers, uh, facilitators, on stage and behind stage. And we're really keen to get that representation into schools, especially schools who are quite diverse. We want to make sure that they know that the arts is a viable career for them and you can have some fun with it if you want to. We also need compassion as well for ourselves and the people we work with. We are keen to keep spreading the tradition of African storytelling. We work with schools and community groups. We provide workshops and performances for these groups. Our work includes music, so we might bring in some African drumming, we might bring in some singing, we might bring in some dance and movement, we might bring in some materials to play with. So we're really active in going away from the traditional westernized way of telling stories it's really about expressing with the body and um seeing what comes out with that and giving it a go really yeah i think that's everything amazing thank you lauren if you'd like to put any um details specific details email addresses websites that sort of thing into the chat please do and um yeah i'm sure you'll get some calls as well as from um you know the schools that are on the line but maybe your arts partners that might like to collaborate with you as well <laughs> so that's great thank you lauren um can i come to alice now from the young creative awards hi alice yes of course hi everyone um it's great to be on this call it's my first time on the call um i'm working with young creatives nottingham which are local um registered charity who um, celebrate and nurture um, creative talents of young people and also help support them into career pathways in the creative industries. Um, so the ways that the charity does that is they run an annual awards event called Young Creative Awards, um, which is in its 16th year. I'll go on to talk about that. Um, but they also um, organise community and educational workshops, um, usually employing creative practitioners who have won the Young Creative Awards. So um, the point of those workshops is it helps to um, spread and, and support um, youth creativity, but also helps those cre creative practitioners to develop their vocational um, skills and careers. Um, and the, the model that the charity has um, been operating has been quite successful. So we've had a number of um, alumni from the awards who have gone on to have really successful um, creative careers and have felt very supported by young creatives in terms of um, the network and, and you know the support that they've they've accessed. Um, so Young Creative Awards is in its 16th year. Um, some of you may already know about it. It's good to see some familiar faces on the call. Um, but for those of you that don't, there are 10 award categories um, and they are multidisciplinary across the arts. So there's visual arts, photography, music, dance, um, graphic design, animation and digital media, uh, all sorts and I will send you um, a link after I've spoken and for each award category there are um, 11 to 15 year old um, entrants it's 16 to 18 and 19 to 24 year olds so lots of opportunities for um, people to win um, and it does carry you know a lot of um, weight for those young people who have who have won in terms of improving their confidence their well-being but also being able to potentially see that their creative talents could result in a career. 
um, which is they found you know really really important. So the awards um, for this year are on the 20th of May and the entry portal is now open and it's open until the 15th of March. Um, so what we would love is to widen participation um, and ensure that all young people are aware of this great opportunity um, to enter into the awards, have their work um, seen and, you know, hopefully they, they might be successful. Um, so what I'll do is in the chat, I will put some um, links to more information. We also have some posters and flyers. So if you are interested, hopefully I'll be able to distribute them and you might be able to put them up in your um, notice boards, etc. Or use them to help um, raise awareness with young people. Thank you. Thanks, Alice. That's great. Um, any questions for anyone that's spoken so far? Please feel free to add questions in the chat or just come off mute and, um, and talk if you'd like. If anything's on your mind or, you've, or you're thinking about how do I, how do I find out more or are you, where are you doing these talks and how do I bring you into my school? Feel free to come off mute and ask a question at any point. Um, thank you, Alice. That's great. And we'll hopefully be getting all the posters out in the next couple of weeks. So look out for your poster coming out to your school. And obviously, it's not just a poster that will encourage your pupils to, to apply to and create awards. They might need you to find some time after school or to support them with the, the portal. It's just an online. Um, they can register online um, through the website and um, you know attach their submission that way. So it's a very straightforward, simple process. But I think teachers can play a really big role in encouraging people to apply. So please do uh, encourage your students to do that. Um, wonderful. Thank you, Alice. So next, can I ask um, Jackie from Positively Empowered Kids to say hello and tell us what you're doing? Hello. I haven't been on one of these for a while. It feels like ages, <laughs> but it's good to be back. So hello, everybody. Yes. I'm Jackie from Positively Empowered Kids. And we are, for those who don't know me, uh, a social enterprise that focuses on early intervention and prevention of mental ill health in children. So it's really helping children, young people and their families and also in schools to be proactive with their mental health. What other things you can do to improve it? And obviously the arts is a really good place for a lot of young people to understand the importance of um, using their skills in that area to help them uh, feel better about themselves, express themselves um, therapeutically. It's, it's very powerful. So that's why I'm kind of part of this group because I think it's really important. Um, Things that we do are very creative. We we work in a, a fun way that actually incorporates a lot of learning around mental health, but it's not the kind of when when a lot of people provide education around mental health, it can be quite a challenging thing to do, but we do it in such a fun way, make it easy to understand and impactful. And uh, we work in secondaries, we work in primaries, we work in early years, so we can work across the spectrum. Um, for example, in the secondary arena, we can do exam resilience, some fun creative ways to actually manage your mind, whether it's through the thought processes, the emotions, just getting your mind in the right place for learning um, or even sitting exams. So we can do a lot around that. We can do, we've got a peer mentoring programme where we train a group of young people to then mentor their peers um, in their resilience and helping them to really improve that. We do work around transition. Um, we also do teacher training. So we can do a whole lot of things, whether it's an inset day or a staff wellbeing workshop for themselves, but also how to support others in a very proactive way. Um, one of the big things we do is a festival. Some of you may have heard of our Positively Empowered Kids Festival that happens every year. Um, this year, we're, we're moving to the Arboretum, so city centre location. We had uh, 2,300 people last year attend. It's a mental health and wellbeing festival, sort of targeted as a fun day with lots of specialists from the arts, from the therapies, from sport and many different ways that, that really can help families to explore and discover what is right for their child or for them as a parent. So we've got lots of different services there and um, it will happen on the 23rd of June, just so everybody knows. 
Um, and we will be really upgrading the festival this year. We're going to have an early years area, our main event area, and then we're going to really include a teen area this year. So if any partners can offer something, I was just listening to Lauren speak. Um, that is very exciting with with women of colour and empowerment. Love all of that because we're positively empowered kids. So I'd love to again, I've already written down Lauren's details, but there are probably lots of you who can make a difference uh, with young people. Let them know what's out there. It's it's kind of a signposting event. Let them explore what's out there and what they can access and come to. So that's for families um, particularly. And we want to encourage as many to come to the event. It's free, completely free event. We don't charge for it. So we're working hard to get the money in at the moment to, to pay for it. Um, we also have a neurodiversity event happening in on the 16th of March in Newark. And again, that is around empowerment of young people who have neurodivergent needs so that they feel good about who they are. Uh, we're going to be running more than one of those. So again, we can bring creative arts into that somehow with dance or um, movement or theatre. We can do other things in the future, but we've got two pots of funding to run two events. We've got one planned. We'll be doing another one later in the year. Um, and then and when Jacob hops on, uh, we're also going to be collaborating with him. I'm not going to say anything about that because that's Jacob's arena. Um, so I'll stop there. My details are in the chat and uh, get in touch if anybody is interested in chatting thank you thank you jackie that's brilliant thank you and we will come back to jacob because we might have a bit of a longer time at the end if that's all right um i think deborah's got a hand up so deborah did you want to ask a question yes please so uh do you guys also 23 notifications uh, notification uh do you guys also uh, uh connect with uh, young people also through civic engagement, you know, uh, so along with mental health, education, empowerment, uh, do you guys also do civic engagement? You know, uh, you know, kind of like like things like uh, understanding the state of the country and you know political affairs and things like that. Okay, so do you mean like? Um, oh, <laughs> sorry, Deborah. You're. I think we're getting a bit of feedback from your um, speech. Thing that's yeah, <laughs> we do. We I think lots of the um, arts organisations that are part of Challenge will use um, topics that are really important to young people to explore within the way that they're using the art forms that they're exploring. If that makes sense. So, yeah. so I mean, at the moment, Nottingham is going through a very challenging time with um, city council cuts and austerity. Um, and a lot of the kind of things that are coming up for young people, including mental health uh, as a kind of crisis in this country, is um, is something that obviously okay. arts partners are exploring um, with them. It's, an, it's no, an interesting question for schools, how much schools are doing that. So this call is very much about supporting some of the secondaries to understand what arts part, how they can connect with arts partners. And um, I would hope that in some of the things that schools are doing around youth voice and oracy that they're able to support young people express themselves and what's important to them within oh, the enough. within the kind of arena of creative arts and expression so i hope that kind of answers your question <laughs> um uh, so, so, so what yeah. about in, uh, other um for example uh, the issue of poverty because I, I i did read somewhere in the news about you know this um, the issue of poverty in the UK that's growing much more. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you don't mind, Deborah, because we've we've got kind of quite limited time and lots of people to listen to, I'll let people answer their, your question about whether they're engaging people in issues of poverty in the chat, and then we'll come back round to the, the arts partners who have got kind of four or five minutes each to to share what they're doing with schools. Is that all right? Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, right, so uh, thanks for the question. Deborah's in the US, <laughs> so she's joining us from America um, and really interested in what's going on in the UK. So I hope that doesn't throw anybody. So um, who haven't we heard from yet? Would, could we could we come over to um, Hannah uh, from Interville? It'd be lovely to, to hear from you. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, so um, this is my first meeting. So hello. Um, we've been to meetings like this um, in 
other parts of uh, the Midlands and, and the UK, but this is the first time I've come to Nottingham, so it's nice to be here. Um, so I guess just a little bit about Interfilm to start with. We're a UK-wide organisation. However, we have coordinators who operate in each of the regions of the UK. Um, so the coordinator um, is actually uh, my colleague Jenny uh, for the Midlands. Um, and it was myself, but I'm currently on a secondment, but back to the Midlands shortly. So that's that's why I'm here, sort of straddling both roles at the, at the same time. Um, so for those who don't know us, uh, we are, uh, well, our, our official blurb is we're the UK's leading film uh, education organisation in the UK. That is our official blurb, I should clarify that. Um, and uh, so we have quite a, an extensive program, um, but we very much operate on a regional level as well. So that that's just kind of like to emphasize that. So that's why we have a coordinator uh, who covers uh, this particular region, covers Nottingham, Nottinghamshire, and, and lots of, uh, well, all of the Midlands basically. Um, so in terms of our programme, um, there's a number of different things that we do. I know uh, a few people here already interested uh, or heavily involved in careers. That is a big part of our programme uh, is called Screen Careers uh, and that encompasses quite a, a lot of different things I'll come back to in a moment. Uh, we also have uh, an extensive filmmaking programme, uh, which again has numerous components. Uh, and we also have a teaching uh, with film uh, arm as well. And that is very much to support teachers um, in the using film uh, in the classroom and for enrichment purposes and, and beyond. So for each of those areas, there's lots of different things that we can support uh, individual educators and we can also support schools as as a whole so we uh, we have a lot of resources for all of those different areas that I've just mentioned um, and also broken down into like subject areas as well um, and different topics that you might study on the curriculum we've got an extensive CPD program um, and uh, there's numerous different modules for that. So, for example, one of our most popular ones is how you can use film to support teachers of literacy. Uh, there's filmmaking, there's stop motion animation. Um, there's lots of other things. So there's, thing, there's ones to do with mental health as well and how you can use film to support the teaching of that. Um, there's too many to mention, to be totally honest, but there's lots there and worth exploring. I'll put all of this in the links. Um, we also have uh, events that we have. We have uh, our Interfilm Festival, which uh, Ella from Broadway, hello, uh, will know more about, um, whereby uh, we take young people into cinemas across the region and our Spring Screenings, spring screenings Programme. Uh, so we have multiple events that are live now in Nottingham, which are available for you to book and they are free. Um, and I'll put a link to those uh, in a moment as well when I stop waffling. Um, we also have our annual awards uh, whereby uh, we um, showcase and celebrate uh, filmmaking talent uh, from across the UK and also like the educators, teachers, youth workers who support young people to make those films and support them on their journey into careers. That's live now. Uh, entries close 31st of March. Um, what else can I mention? Um, we uh, events. We also have a few live careers events um, that are coming up as well. Um, some online, some face to face. So that's something I can share more information about. Um, and one big thing that I didn't mention is our program is free uh, for all UK uh, schools. Um, and so, yeah, anything that I've men just mentioned is free to access for any state funded school in the UK. Um, and I guess particularly if you are a multi academy trust or, or operate similarly to that, um, then we can also offer offer sort of like private bespoke CPD sessions as well as our more public ones as well. So there's lots and lots of different things that we can do. Um, I'll put my email address in the chat. Um, and I'll put a few different web links, um, but have an explore um, and just just drop me an email. I'm here um, and would love to help. Thank you. Thanks, Hannah. That's amazing. So much going on that we can discover 
Um, I'll come straight over to Ella from Broadway, if that's OK, staying with the film theme. Hello, it's nice to see everyone uh, familiar and new. Um, yes, please get involved with Interfilm. Like, it's absolutely brilliant and, like, it's so lovely to have primary school and secondary school children in Broadway and like I feel a real buzz about the building so highly recommend. Um, yes I'm Ella Townsend, I'm um, part of Film Hub Midlands um, but I'm based in Broadway, the cinema in the city centre. Um, my role is the Young Talent Coordinator which is essentially me to support and provide BFI Film Academy activities for young people aged 16 to 25 across the Midlands, supporting local and regional partners like Broadway Nottingham, Phoenix and Leicester, um, Midlands Arts Centre in Birmingham, kind of all the way across the 11 counties, I believe, of the Midlands. I'm just getting used to them. Um, but essentially, my job is to provide funding and create activities for 16 to 25s, whether that's like mentoring, screenings, workshops, networking, film festivals, local, national um, or regional, online webinars, uh, networking, screenings, kind of everything to do with film. Um, I'm, your, I'm your lady. Um, so yeah, as part of my job, as part of my role, it's three years funding. So we just come to the end of uh, year one, and each year will run from April to March. It's not, it's quite, um, and that's slightly challenging when it comes to working with schools and colleges because I know everyone works to a very different timeline and format and calendar style. Um, so yeah, I've got three months left of year one, and then all of my activity for year two will go live from the 1st of April. So hopefully we can work together. Um, for all events, I offer travel bursaries and ticket, um, ticket fee covers. We don't want any financial barrier to we don't want this to be a financial barrier, basically, for any local or regional opportunities. Um, we just want young people to get involved and attend and keep being engaged. Um, I've written this all out, so I will forward this and put it in the chat. Um, but I've got two things coming up for um, 16 to 25s at Broadway. Uh, on the 15th of February from 7 o'clock, we've got Broadway's BFI Film Academy short course celebration event, which is um, each year we apply for funding to uh, deliver a practical filmmaking course out of Broadway. This year we did it over October half term. I received 76 applications all across um, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, uh, Loughborough. Um, yeah, and basically I had to read through them all and pick 20 and they were a really brilliant cohort. So they've made two short films. So that's going ahead on the 15th of February. Um, and then as part of my main role, we're hosting a BFI Future Film Festival short film screening of from uh, films successfully submitted to the festival. And then that's going to be a Q&A with them and then networking as well. Oh, sorry, I was a bit worried about what I was going to say, but I'll stop and I will put it in the chat for you. But yeah, feel free to email me, ring me. I'm always at my desk at Broadway because it's nice and toasty in the office. So yeah, I'm always here if you need me. Amazing. Thank you, Ella. Um, that's great. Uh, welcome, Caroline. Thank you for popping in and joining us. Um, Caroline, you're here from Nonsearch. Would you would like to share some of the things that you've got going on at Nonsearch and specifically the Notch Youth Trend Survey as well? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And so sorry I've only been able to jump on. Um, I've been in Mansfield this afternoon, which is why I'm only back at my laptop now, um, because in March we're taking over um the Debenhams unused store for a day to run a youth-led festival with nine of our cohorts across uh, Nottinghamshire so um we had Inspire College um there this afternoon looking at the space and planning all of their activities that they're going to be doing to um Amazing. to bring that space alive so that's very exciting starting to see the vision coming to life about how we're going to turn this abandoned um, um yeah this abandoned shop into a youth-led arts festival so watch the space on that one it's very exciting and if you've got any groups that um are making any work of any kind whether that's performance or music or visual art that would like to get involved as a contributor then please do 
let me know because there are other opportunities for people to come in who aren't part of the core festival to to take part so that's why I'm late um okay. <laughs> um and then I also wanted to mention not youth trends everybody um I don't know if people have heard of the not youth trends before um it's a piece of research which is being conducted in partnership with the University of Nottingham and ourselves at uh, Nonsuch Studios and it's gathering information from young people aged, aged 11 to 25. And it's this great in-depth survey which really captures the voices of young people, about their concerns, about their passions, about their hobbies, um, about how they feel about living in Nottingham, what they want, um, what they want local councils to know and understand. Um, it's a real opportunity for young people to be sort of activists and really share their voices um, and that and that all of that data is then collated and, and made into a report which is then going to be shared across Nottinghamshire to schools to organizations to local council um, so that young people really do have their voices heard so if any um, anyone has got a particular group of young people that you think would be up for sitting down either with yourselves or with or with me if, if they need some extra support to sort of help fill out the survey, then please do let me know. Um, we've got lots of different sort of ways in to help that survey be accessible to everybody. So whether that's through doing a session where there's more support or the survey being split into two parts, so it's a little bit more bite-sized, we've got, we've got some great options to how, how we can sort of frame this piece of research so that young people feel really empowered to be able to share, um, to share their voices with us. So I'll, I'll drop some links into the chat um, of how to find out a bit more about this research, um, where the survey is and some contact details if you'd like to find out more. Um, it'd be great to hear from anyone who may be interested in um, sort of buying into this piece of research and learning more about their young people themselves and um, sharing it with schools that might be really interested in sort of having that buy-in of them getting that information back and learning about their young people in in that area as well there's a lot of information that can really come out of this if it's used well so yeah thank you <laughs> thank you thanks for putting the things in the chat as well and if any teachers have any um questions or would like Caroline to come into their schools um, or find ways to incorporate into different subjects. I'm sure there are links to find across different subjects um, at school. So thank you for that. That's great. Um, Martha, can I come to you to share all the amazing things you're doing? Well, the wonderful virtual exhibition that you're going to have um, uh, during light night. Would you like me to share the PowerPoint? You can you can yeah. give it a go, Cathy. Um, I'll give it a go. <laughs> uh, it, it was put together fairly rapidly because we only heard uh, fairly uh, not recently, but we heard just before was it just before or just after the Christmas holidays that we we were successful in our application. So it's been a bit of a race, but it's a wonderful wonderful thing. Um, last year we were part of. Um, Nottingham Light Night, and we were able to project um, our digital exhibition of work that was produced at Blue Coat Aspley. Um, and so we are able to do that again this year. So I just grabbed a few uh, images that will be involved just to show some of the variety of the young people's work that we're going to be able to exhibit. Um, and I just wanted to kind of um, say a couple of things about this. One is uh, what's really important to us about this is that young people's work is seen in such a public and prestigious festival. Um, and for us, that is really important because it raises the status of their work and also their voices within the community that they live in. It also, I think, helps to enable people to understand some of the amazing work that's going on in schools with incredibly talented and committed teachers. Um, and um, 
and that's not always seen because it's sometimes quite difficult to access. So uh, the opportunity to uh, get the chance to see some fantastic work um, and also the commitment by this particular school, although I would say I come across it really regularly in my work, luckily, um, is the uh, the real desire to enable young people to express themselves and their concerns and their issues and their interests. So this year we're looking um, at, at spotlighting young people's uh, views and expression around their own identity and then as this slide suggests as well as uh, ideas around migration, memory and mental health um, and how they feel about their society. Um, we just wanted to also just let people know, as this slide suggests, that we're a Gold Art Smart School and we take that responsibility really um, seriously in that it really makes a difference to schools to be supported in the arts and to be again recognised nationally. And it makes my work and I hope everybody else who's sitting around uh, the screens work a bit easier and a bit more valued because that information is then recognised and supported by senior leaders. Um, and then also just to kind of raise people's awareness that we're a school of sanctuary and that all of the schools in the Archway Learning Trust are either schools of sanctuary which support and are committed to providing a, a sense of welcome and belonging to young people who are either asylum seekers or refugees uh, in their schools, but also enhancing that in sense of uh, feeling that they belong and are welcomed in the city of Nottingham. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's um, it was wonderful last year. It was very cold. Um, but it was a, a truly uh, joyous experience where we had loads and loads of young people come to see the work as well as um, arts partners, as well as teachers. Um, and um, I really welcome you very warmly if you put your hat and coats on because it's a, <laughs> it is cold. We are um, by the um, uh, Robin Hood statue. So we as you. I could have got a, an image actually of, of what that work looked like, but it's projected behind Robin Hood, the Robin Hood statue. Um, and we're working on a, an in, a kind of a soundtrack, which is capturing children's voices and and music, as well as projecting those images that are powerful and and, um, and deserve to be seen. So um, I really hope if you get the chance to come to Light Night, um, it's on the Friday, the 2nd and Saturday, the 3rd of, of February. It would be terrific to see you. That's it. Thanks, Martha. That's great. Thank you. Um, I think with the remaining time we've got, we'd love to hear from um, Sarah and also Jacob. So Sarah from Playhouse, and then I'd love to invite Jacob to come and share some of his work. So Sarah, can we come to you first? Sarah, are you there? Hi, I am here. I'm having children juggles. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, hi. Did <laughs> you just shut that for me? Thank you. <laughs> um, hi. Yes. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, we have a few okay. things going on at the Playhouse. It's quite exciting for second school age. Um, we have um, open casting workshops for one of our professional shows called The Trials. That's happening in August but the um, auditions are in March I can pop that link in the chat so it's anyone between I think it's their playing age between 13 and 19 um, and it's the first sort of open call out we've had because um, usually it's uh, you know goes through more a formal audition means so that's quite exciting so we're doing lots of um, sort of uh, workshops to introduce the themes to different groups that we work with in schools and community settings and then anyone that does the workshop or does not do the workshop um, can sign up to the professional auditions. Um, so I can pop that in the chat. We also um, have our Shine Outreach which is our youth theatre, free youth theatre that's out in the community. Um, we are hoping to expand that a little bit into some target areas. So if there's a school or educational setting who thinks they'd like to host or that they have a group of um, students who would particularly benefit from this kind of um, free provision in the areas of Arnold, St Anne's, Meadows, Clifton, Hucknall, Sutton Kirk, Sutton, Kirkby, Carlton, 
on Netherfield, then um, it would be great to hear from, from you. So I can set up a chat with Rob, who's uh, looking after Shine at the moment. And then um, we also have um, our Schools Massive, which is our Shakespeare on the main stage opportunity. It's a Shakespeare festival that's happening in July. And um, that's open to key stage two and three. Um, and that's a series of workshops in school with a practitioner and to put together a Shakespeare scene with a class for performance on the main stage alongside other schools or um, youth groups um, at our Shakespeare Festival in July. So that information is also on the website. So after I've stopped speaking, I'll put all those details in the chat. Thank you, Sarah. That's great. Thanks so Thank much. You. Um, now I'd like to, if it's OK, there's just two things. So Nottingham Contemporary have got some slots left for their, within their CPD session on Thursday, the 1st of Feb. So that's an opportunity to um, find out more about their upcoming exhibition that opens on the Friday. So please do book on if you're interested in going to the CPD. Um, it's a twilight session. And they also have a follow up educator um, LGBTQ plus educator session on the 12th of March. So I will send all those um, links around. Uh, they also have something fairly that's, that might strike a chord with some people, which is that they've got a, a musician and sound artist coming for a month residency in February and are looking for people to come and jam and collaborate with that musician um, in the, as he builds up towards an, uh, a um, exhibition later in the year, I think. So, Again, we'll share that with everybody so that you've got that following following this meeting. Um, and then one more thing, the National Literacy Trust, Charlotte Blick, who many of you will know, um, has got free two free programmes for secondary age pupils. Um, it says in the PDF and details that I'll send around to you that it's rolled into provision settings, but it's actually any schools with secondary age pupils are eligible. Um, and there are some really, really interesting writers programmes, one that's for 10 sessions, one that's for 20 sessions, specifically looking at working with really accessible texts and um, supporting girls, particularly, as well as uh, another session that's mixed groups around resilience and reading skills and well-being and relationships and being healthy. So some really interesting things there. So I will share the various things that have been sent to me following this meeting. Um, and I hope that all of that does, you don't feel too bombarded with loads of information, but it. But it, I think it's really useful because we have these sessions so that you can put a face to the, to the information that comes at you <laughs> because all of these amazing things are organized by brilliant people. And I hope that it's, it's all about developing the relationships and, and finding the people that you need that can help you make things happen in your school. So, there's one person that we've left, left left to hear from, and I'm really, really pleased that you could join us, Jacob, today. Um, so Jacob is uh, here. He's He's got a play coming to the Playhouse later in the year and some opportunities to work with school. So, Jacob, can I come to you um, and, and you can introduce yourself and what you're up to? Thanks, Jacob. Hello. Can you hear me OK? Yes. Yeah. OK, perfect. You definitely haven't saved the best till last. Lots of inspirational people <laughs> in here. Thank you for all the work that you're doing creatively with our young people across the city. Um, as described, um, and I may have worked in a few schools that are in here, actually. I think I noticed mm -hmm. a couple of people from particular trusts um, where typically in the past I've um, ran interventions and workshops with young people about restorative practices, emotional well-being, healthy relationships, consequential thinking, um, knife crime, and um, tailored to the needs of the schools um, and young people, whether that's in alternative provisions or mainstream. Um, but yeah, I'm from the Meadows. Um, unfortunately, you know, had a lot of the issues that young people were facing in our schools in terms of that lack of engagement in school, not knowing what the benefits of engaging in education are. You know, we, we've got so many young people at the moment who struggle to express themselves healthily and, you know, haven't been pushed into the arts enough yet to help them find their voices and um, 
express themselves healthily, which spills out into all the conflict that we're often trying to manage in schools. And that's where I tend to work with pastoral teams in terms of how to work restoratively to help young people resolve their own conflict and set up behaviour management kind of policies, I guess, to uh, respond to conflict in schools in a healthy way. And I wrote a book about my childhood and teenage experiences um, here, right from wrong, and uh, which follows my journey through um, education, falling out of education, getting in with the wrong crowd, uh, gang culture, masculinity, and um, eventually going into prison um, for for one punch manslaughter, which you may have seen me campaigning around for the last 10 years since being released from custody. I've been spreading awareness that a single punch can kill and that we need to find alternative ways to resolve conflict. So I met the parents of the man that I punched and we found a way to resolve our conflict, to repair the harm and to work together collaboratively to um, spread these important messages. And um, Adam, the artistic director at the Playhouse, came across my story because um, I did a series in lockdown on Radio 4 called The Punch, which feel free to go and listen to, still on BBC Sounds, and um, said, look, you're in Nottingham Story, we'd love to have a Nottingham Story on at the Playhouse. And so the journey began um, over two years ago. And then we were able to get, you know, probably Nottingham's most celebrated writer uh, in James Graham. I don't know if any of you have seen Sherwood, the TV drama. Season two is going to be coming out in May, the same time that our play is going to be out. So he's writing the script. As we speak, I'm getting glimpses of the first draft at the moment. So we're going to be working collaboratively on that script. And it really will be useful to have as many young people, whether that's from the drama, whether that's kids with, uh, you know, behavioural issues or not, to attend the show and engage with the wraparound participation projects that we're putting on um, at the Playhouse. And so it's on from the 4th of May to the 25th of May. I'll link it all into the chat and I'll send it to Kathy to circulate if you've got a mailing list. Um, and then I'm looking to, off the back of the play, come into schools and deliver some interventions and workshops. Again, I'll put some more detail about what they look like. Um, but at the same time, I'm hoping to collaborate with freelance practitioners or uh, local arts projects or groups that want to co-design or deliver some of these projects in a way um, that helps engage with young people and help give them a voice. Part of that offer is, as Jackie mentioned, from Positively Empowered Kids um, in the primary school arena, we're developing uh, community circles. So we're building um, benches with young people from um, alternative provisions and from disadvantaged backgrounds to build um, community circles that we then donate to primary schools. And then we do some training with staff and workshops with the young people as to how they can use that space in the playground to resolve conflict, um, have better conversations, have healthy relationships. Um, and we're hoping to create a network um, across the country of community circles in, in playgrounds in primary schools. And then in secondary schools, again, um, interventions, mentoring, um, keynotes, although I am, um, you know, I like to have impact and legacy within schools, so prefer to have more long term um, working relationships as opposed to dropping in, planting a few seeds and hoping somebody waters them when I've left. Um, other than that, I am um, going to, I work with the Nottingham Violence Reduction Partnership and the Police Crime Commissioner, and I have a meeting with them in Nottingham shortly, so I'll have to get going soon. Um, and then we also offer um, CPD training in schools to staff around restorative practices so how to build healthy communities, increase social capital, repair harm and restore relationships 
um, often the the perception of restorative approaches from some schools has been that um, it's a soft option um, and it definitely I just want to dispel that myth um, because the way working restoratively it's about having high expectations and high standards that are made clear to young people but at the same time it's having high support and we can do both of those at the same time it's working in a framework that helps you to keep high expectations and high support uh, so that you're working with young people that allows them to identify um, the issues that they're having and, and co-create plans that are going to support them to help regulate their own emotions help manage conflict stop getting kicked out of the classroom <laughs> attend school uh, whatever their issues are and whatever their triggers are so i hope that kind of gives you a little bit of an insight i'm also hoping to engage with as many people as possible um not just when the play is running um but uh, during the during the during the runtime we have we're working with local set designers at the moment to create a uh, artistic installation that will be outside the playhouse in front of the sky mirror um, and that is um, a talking circle design it's not even been designed yet so it's hard for me to try and explain what it is but basically it's a space that encourages people to learn the skills of how to talk to each other and how to resolve conflict and what it takes for us to do that as a society if we're to resolve some of the complex social issues that um, face us all yeah. um, but what we would like to do is put on some maybe art projects from young people have more young people's voices alongside that installation and for it to tour in other, other um, places so maybe the national justice museum contemporary art potentially lakeside all um, potential partners for this installation to tour um, and I think that is it the other thing is the set designer wants young people working on the punch play to shadow um, there are lots Thank of different you. places where young people can maybe come and watch some of the casting rehearsals or look backstage or I'm, I'm wanting to make it as um, insightful for young people in the arts locally as possible. So if you have any ideas as to how the Playhouse and myself can engage with your art projects and um, gain some experience, then that's another potential possibility. Sounds great. I mean, Jacob, there's there's so much potential and, and so many ideas within all of the things that you've just said. Um, yeah, think, I'm sorry, that was just kind of like verbal dialogue. No, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And I'm I'm sure my head's buzzing with things that we could talk about. <laughs> I'm sure other people will have the same kind of feeling of, OK, yeah, we need to sit down and work this out. So um, I think it's brilliant that, you know, that you're, you're you're here and you're part of Challenge now. It's really great that you're coming along and being part of this. And I think a lot of what you've said ties in with um, the things that we're wanting to do around Youth Voice. Um, and young people's engagement in shaping what's going on and speaks to all of the areas of kind of the, all the barriers that young people are facing to actually take up the opportunities that are available to them as well. I think we've got um, one of the things I would love to mention before we go is that we've got a group called Connecting Knots, which is the Youth Cultural Partnership for Challenge. Um, yeah, Jacob's going to come along and talk to them. Uh, which is great, uh, but we'd we'd love to have some more representation from our six forms to join Connecting Knot. So if anyone that's here from an educational institution and has a six form, it's 16 plus, um, would like to nominate a couple of people to come along to that group. It's a sort of high profile strategic partnership that aims to bring young people together to help then go back so they'd be kind of be ambassadors for their sixth form to find out what's going on and how they can um, influence uh, the visibility and accessibility of arts and cultural experiences and, and opportunities for those that are, you know within their world and within their school and sixth form space so if anyone's interested in that as well please get in touch with us and i think ash can put the the link in for the for the connecting knots yeah, forms um so that's great we've come to five o'clock so all it all that's left for me to do really is to thank you all so much for your time and for sharing and for being here and listening to each other i really hope that there's food for thought 
and that you've um, that you make connections after today, that you email each other as arts partners, as well as schools that are wanting to connect with the arts organisations in the city. And if anyone has any questions or thoughts or things to follow up on, um, we do have a challenge operations partnerships meeting next week on Wednesday from four till six. So come along to that. Um, it'd be lovely if there are any uh, more sixth form or secondary school education reps coming along to Ops Group meetings, that would be amazing. So you're all very welcome. Just get in touch. So thanks very much, everyone. I hope you all have a lovely, lovely evening. And it's been brilliant to hear about all that you're doing. You're amazing. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Amen. Mm -hmm.